Hello and what's up you guys, it's Lurnge here with another Minecraft video. I know I haven't posted in a while, as, as always, um, but I have put quite a bit of effort into this video, so I w would appreciate it if you give me some uh, good feedback. Now, um, I, I've come across this video, or I've made this video, because I think I've found probably one of the best setups for big reactors. Um, big reactors, obviously, you know, most effective way to generate power in FTB Infinity, as well as DW20. Any of the 1.7.10 packs is the best way to generate power, without a doubt. Um, it is fairly expensive to get started with, but it is well worth it. Anyway, so these are my nuclear reactors. These have... This is this is kind of my power setup, and uh, the way I've been building these is I've been scaling them up, and they've all been running off one nuclear reactor, and I'd run a whole ton of turbines for nuclear reactors. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you guys how to build this. So I'll be right back, and we'll go ahead and we'll get started. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Now, in my single player world, I've been working on this, and I've actually been putting it. I put it five blocks above the ground, so that will be the base level, and I'm not in creative mode. Um, so, one, two, three. One, two, three. Alright, so that we start by making a seven by seven, and I went ahead and I got the builder's wand here. So, I'm going to go ahead and get that started. There you go. Alright, so I've been putting all the access ports on the bottom. Um, just makes it a little bit easier, so let's go ahead and grab the, there are a few things we're going to need. We're going to need the controller, we're going to need reactor access points, we need two of these, one, two, and then we'll also need a wrench to flip the input and output of these. Go ahead and do that really quickly. Actually, we don't need a wrench to do that, but so this will intake this will export all the uranium so and this will allow me to pull it out go ahead and tear out a little bit more of this um okay so then we also have the reactor casing and then what we need is we actually we need some access ports no wait no we already have these we need coolant ports and we have to feed water in through the coolant ports so um, anyone who's messed with big reactors a little bit knows it's incredibly hard to um, keep the proper amount of water in these and actually place these all in the wrong spot here. So I'm going to go ahead and rotate everything just a little bit. Um, that will go there, there, that will go there, that one goes there, and that goes there, and then that goes there. There we go. All right, so we can go ahead and move that from our inventory here, and then we'll change this to outlet mode. There we go. So these actually need water, um, and so the best way to get water is actually transfer. It's extra utilities transfer nodes because they give you water ridiculously fast. So we grab a stack of liquids. Then we need world interaction blocks. There we go, and we actually need a ton of these things. I'm going to go ahead and save an inventory. And actually, what I like to do is, it's probably best if you line this uh, this back part with them, as opposed to just popping them there. And then what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll grab this and go like so. Um, one right there. There we go, and then we have to put water in there, so we'll grab some water here in just a minute. Water. And put it down in there like that. Kind of hard to get in. Okay, so then when you give these the world upgrades, they start to suck water out. Um, once they have somewhere to put it. So we'll go ahead start grabbing, oh, we need water on the outside too. You have to have two source blocks, so we'll, 
one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, because this is seven by seven. Go ahead and go this way a little bit. Go this way. There we go. Seven and seven. Seven and seven and one more. There you go. All right. So <clears throat> about to sneeze, man. Uh, so the next part is we want to put the fuel rods in. So the way the fuel rods are gonna go here is like so, um, and they will just go all the way up. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'll make this one two layers tall. So. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We put the controllers on top. There we go. Then we go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The controllers actually go right here. The control rods and these will uh I'll explain those a little bit more later. Go ahead and make another little box here. The glass will go right here. Okay, so next we need to put a um, coolant port. We need one right here and one right here. Then we need to take the lever and flip that one. Um, and same thing over here and over here and over here. Okay, then we flip the coolant port. More. There we go, and then you want to fill that in with. Actually, there's no point in filling in with reactor glass. Oh, I'm gonna lag spike. There we go. No crash. Good. So we'll go ahead and do this. I'm only gonna do this one side. There you go. All right. So do that to all your sides, and then you'll do it up. So we'll go ahead. I'm gonna do it to this side really quickly, and put the reactor casing on. Bam, bam, wrench, cool. All right, so I went and got the items I needed. I needed the the turbine housings, um, as well as all the turbine pieces. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So the turbines are gonna be the exact same size. They're gonna be seven by seven, but they're actually gonna be a little bit longer, and we do not put one in that middle area. So. So let's start with this, and the way I like to build my turbines is I like my layer flat, my first layer flat. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. I like this bottom layer solid blocks, then all the other ones side. Um, all the other sides, I like them hollow, or uh, glass. So this turbine can only be 16 long. Let's go ahead and build it out 16 here. And the frame, as always, one, two, three, four, five. Oh, that's only four. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it looks like I actually, I need to do that a little bit differently, but that's fine. I'll do that later. So let's go ahead and add the corners here. There we go, and one more. All right, and then, so we need the fluid ports here, and you match up the colors together. So that side was blue, and that is right, and then we'll go ahead and fill this wall in. There you go, all right. And then we take the reactor glass, Let's go ahead and fill the glass in. Now the nice thing about the creative wand is I can do this all at the same time, but normally you can't. So I also do use the creative wand on my single player world because I feel like um, it's fair to use. All right, so next, last but not least, we need to make a reactor shaft. Actually, this isn't last. This is far from last. We have to have a reactor shaft run all the way down. Then we need to put down a reactor bearing rod. 
and then we'll go ahead and finish up putting blocks along here. And do that. There we go. Alright, so next we need a... Let's see, we'll need a reactor power port. We will only need one, and then we need a controller. I think that should... Okay. Part... Alright, there's a part that's not compatible. Where's that part at? Oh! That's a reactor glass, not turbine glass. Yeah, okay. Alright you guys, I figured what was up. I was using reactor glass, not turbine glass. So, so now it should work. Hopefully we won't have any problems. Yeah, there we go. So now we need to apply blades. Now, well we need to apply blades and conduits. So we want about 80 blades. That's the ideal amount for how much steam we're going to be pumping in this. Um, so let's go ahead. Actually, I have them in my inventory. Uh, so one. Oops, that's not the right stuff. One, two, three. Four, so that's eight, so we're gonna need ten of these, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go, alright, so now we need some endarium endurium. And this is the most efficient, you know, um metal to use. You can use electrum, but it doesn't work as well. So you go ahead and you make that in a circle like this, and I think we'll end up doing four layers. So two, three, four. Right up against there like that. All right. So then once we uh, disengage coils, activate reactor, if there were steam, we could activate it. Now there's one more thing we actually need to do, and we need to set this to 1732. Now... 1725 technically should work, but 32 is what I've tested at, and it works pretty well there. Um, but basically it means there are 80 blades. We'll use all 80 blades, trust me. Or we'll use almost all 80 blades. There are like some problems with it. Um, but uh, 80 blades, we'll use almost all of them. And it'll be fine. It'll, it'll work. So... So then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to duplicate that for all four sides, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and do that off screen. Alrighty, you guys. So I'm back and I went ahead and I built my, built my Octo freaking thing. And I'll, uh, I'll explain how the power calculation works and stuff here in a minute. I haven't configured them all properly, but I have configured a few of them. So... <clears throat> So I put liquid cryothium in there. Um, I put it in every single slot. Liquid cryothium is actually pretty easy to, to get once you have it all set up and automated. So we'll go ahead and look at this. And it looks like it's producing 14,000 um, millibuckets per tick of steam. And if you think about it, I'm using about 2,000, or I'm using 1,700 per reactor. So 1,700 times 8. Because I have eight reactors, I'll give you a general idea how much you'll get there. Um, so if I go ahead and engage the coils, what you'll want to do is you'll actually you'll want to set it to 1732, and then wait till you're at exactly 1800, and then engage the, engage the coils. Okay, um, and we'll go ahead and we'll do that with all of them. Actually, we'll just go ahead and engage all the coils. They won't quite get up to 1800 if you engage the coils early. So keep that in mind. But I just want to show you guys how much power these are producing. Um, at the cost of, you know, a little bit yellow Uh So we'll go ahead and engage those coils. Engage those coils. This is one of the ones that's, like, capped out. And this will, it's producing 30,000 RF per tick, as you can see. Um, and it'll actually go down below 20,000, and then it'll go back up to 20,000 once it hits the 1800 mark, which is the ideal mark. Um, so we'll go ahead and engage all the coils, and it's these are producing a whole ton of power. Once they're all finished, um, 20k plus 20k plus 20k plus 20k, so it's 20k per reactor. 
Um, and then you can also increase efficiency just a little bit by inserting the fuel rods a little bit deeper into the reactor. Um, and so you'll notice I'm using about three mil buckets of eulorium per tick. I'm not quite using all the um, I'm not using all the steam by a long shot. Uh, if you'll notice, I'm producing 14. 14 and each reactor is using a little bit less than two. Oh no, no, no. I'm the, what you want to do is you want to get the fuel rods in there so that they they aren't hindering the fuel production. Um, so you hook up all the reactors. You say yes, it needs you know 14 um, billion mil buckets per tick or whatever billet buckets per tick. Um, and then what you want to do is you'll reduce the, you'll put in the fuel rods a little bit deeper, and if it goes below that number, you have to lift the fuel rods up a little bit. Um, anyway, so that's, this is probably the best big reactor setup, and you can keep scaling this up more and more and more. Um, you just have to find the mill ground with the fuel rods so that you can produce power more efficiently. Um, and something else worth noting, if you plan on hooking these up to MFR lasers, I believe MFR lasers, I can't remember the exact math behind them, but I believe each drill takes 20,000 RF per tick, and so you can have a reactor per drill. I could be totally wrong, though. I, I'm going to have to look that up. Um, but yeah, so this is probably the best big reactor setup um, out there, and you can obviously scale this up and then hook it up with MFR lasers, and you can make it ridiculously efficient. Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Have an amazing day, and I'll see you all next time. Actually, I'm going to get those MFR numbers for you. Alrighty, you guys, so I'm back, and I went and got these numbers for you. So here are the numbers. Um, so each, uh, each ore takes 6 million RF, and uh, each precharger um, will either take... Um, Okay, so it looks like each precharger takes 5,000 RF per tick. Um, so four, four prechargers equals 20,000 RF per tick. Then you have a discount for being above 128 a world height. So each one of these can handle one, one MFR mining drill with four prechargers hooked up. So if you'll imagine eight, eight MFR mining lasers is... And if you have them set to yellowium as well as the cyanide reprocessing, um, it should be enough to actually run it infinitely pretty easily. Um, three mil buckets per tick, and it's producing, yeah, so so it's producing more than enough power, and it's three mil buckets. Um, each ingot gives you a thousand mil buckets, if that gives you a general idea of how much it's using. I've used a total of 13 ingots in all this time. So, so yeah, this is the probably the best MFR setup, and you also will have power left over. You'll have about 840 um, RF per tick um, left over afterwards, assuming you aren't using the height discounts. Um, but yeah, so thank you all so much for watching. Have an amazing day, and I'll be building this in my single-player world. So I'll see you all next time.